coffee and pumpkin bread. Made the pumpkin bread yesterday from some of the leftover pumpkins from last year. We did Long Island cheese pumpkins. We still have some, they kept really well. We're definitely having more this year. So I need to seed some. Garden. I was out here last night in the dark planting lettuce seedlings and I couldn't even see them. Here we are in the dark again. So I don't know how they came out. So we're gonna look now. Well, they're there. Looking a little iffy. We'll add some water. Um, if they don't grow, I'm replacing them with Cosmos. So I got this really cool attachment for my hose called my thumb. It's the only attachment that doesn't break after one season. So one trick I do use for the hose because you don't want the hose traveling over all your seedlings and squishing them when you pull them around is to use something like, oh, I'm gonna use the buckets to guide them. So now it won't pull straight across. It'll have to go past that bucket and then on this side of this bucket so that we can walk down this aisle without squishing all these beans. Could also use rebar or uh, T-posts or anything that, you know, to guide it. Well, we were out here the other day, we were looking around and my husband was like, should we plant more things? He meant that it looks a little sparse, which of course it does. But the good thing about, well, first of all, using this weed mat is that the spacing forces you to not overplant everything um, and it keeps down the weeds, which is the main reason. But it looks like there's so much empty space, but I know that these will fill in and there won't be any empty space except for the walkways. These tomatoes are going to get, you know, huge and out of, don't say out of control, but you know, they're going to get really big and all those flowers will fill in and just make a wall. Same with the green beans and the peppers and where we planted our summer squash here. I think we might have left one in between, but here they get huge. We're not going to be seeing a lot of empty space over here. That's really hard as a gardener to resist the urge to fill everything in when your plants are so small. I'll show you an example. Kids were making forts. Welcome to the dog pen. This is where I put my perennial flower garden. It's just this little L shape. And it looks amazing. Ooh. Ooh. First, I want to show up all my peonies. Look at how pretty. Oh, those are going to be fantastic when they finally bloom. Well, this one looks a little, this one looks a little messed up. I'm not going to lie. Hopefully the rest of them are okay. Pretty pinks. We have the really dark, dark colored ones. And oh, they're just so pretty. And someone was telling me about how peonies cost so much money and they do if you get them like specific types online. But if you go to like Lowe's, um, you can just get the bare roots in a bag for, I think I saw them for only like six bucks or something. And if you go at the end of the season, you can also pick them up because one thing, is that in those box stores, if they have them out on the patio, if they stop blooming, they can no longer sell them. Nobody wants to buy something that doesn't have a bloom on it. So they'll just mark it down like 50%. So, and like, obviously if you buy a bare roots peony, like if some of these took years to bloom, but if you're low on money, but high on time, let's, I mean, the years are gonna pass anyway. I know this guy, he's hidden in this mess of, I don't know if it's goldenrod maybe. Okay, so part of the problem here is weeds, obviously. But a bigger problem that I need to take care of is that I overplanted because when these things were really small, I really crammed them in here because it just didn't look very full. This is probably the worst area. <laughs> so here we have my spider warts, which I love. A peony, the peonies were supposed to be the backbone of the planting. And then I put boxwoods. Okay, so when I planted the boxwood, you know, it was like 
this big. Now look at it. It's huge. It's, it's overcrowded. There's too much here. There's hostas under here that are just completely getting choked out and no sun. There's, these are daffodils, which is fine, but the daylilies, or as some people apparently call them, ditch lilies, uh, have just taken over. They are everywhere. My dog has dug up a lovely hole. I think there was a peony plant there. That's not so great. So here we have peony, spiderwort, daylilies, boxwood. There's probably other stuff underneath there. It's all just getting choked out. And then this. So people would say this is a weed, but it's actually a type of aster. And it blooms in the fall and insects just love it. And I'm not getting rid of it, but, but it gets huge. And this whole area is just too full. It's too full. Everything's choking each other out. It's a mess. I like a wild mess, but not to the detriment of my plants. So pretty. Oh my gosh, so pretty. Trying to enjoy them while they're here. You know, peonies are so fleeting. Feel their leg. I'm almost open. I'm almost open. I'm beautiful. I've exploded. The life cycle of a peony flower. I'm very anxious for this one. I want to see what it looks like. You're so pretty. Okay, enough about, enough about peonies. Let's plant some pumpkin seeds while we talk. Well, let's put them in this. Skills on ma. For those wondering, the compost pile is just made up of a bunch of mulch, kitchen scraps, weeds, um, and most notably a large scoop of horse manure from our neighbors. Like I said, we did Long Island cheese pumpkins and I really liked the taste of them and they stored really well and they're so pretty. They just, you know, they're pretty pumpkins, which I like. But it's so hard to remember that this little seed will eventually grow to be a plant that is about 500 foot by 500 foot. Am I exaggerating? Maybe a little bit, but I don't know. They get freaking huge. Have you ever grown pumpkins before? They just like take over everything. Now I'm going to grow these in the dog pen where we had the corn last year because we're not growing corn outside of a fence because why bother? I might as well just feed every animal that lives around here. So I'm going to plant quite a few because it is a large spot. So I ended up planting all of the seeds we have left. <laughs> I realized today when I was going in my seed bucket of old seeds that I have this bad habit of buying new seeds even if I have ones left over from last year or two years ago or five years ago or whatever so might as well just use them up now because I'm gonna end up buying more anyway. Ta-da! Okay now I'm gonna put it under this cleverly constructed anti-bird nursery section here. Oh, skills me. protects from chickens and other birds, everything. So the whole leaving space thing got me thinking, you know, you can apply lessons from the garden to real life. I needed this lesson right now. I find these lessons always come when I need them. It's the idea of when you do something and it seems like it's not enough, you need to just be patient and give it time and trust that it will grow and fill in the space that it needs to. You can apply that to whatever you need to apply it to. Sometimes I feel that way when homeschooling, <laughs> like I need to do more, we need to do all the things when really it's like, no, if you just stick with this, children learning, it'll come with time. And that has been true. It could also be with a job or making money or I'll apply it to my own life, YouTube. <laughs> Sometimes I feel like I just need to be doing more. If I just did did so much more, I need to be doing shorts. I need to be doing uh, Instagram and Facebook. And if I just push this and make a website and it's like, chill, chill. If you just chill out and give it some space, it'll, it'll do what it needs to do in its own time. There's a reason why this tiny plant is not directly near this other plant. The reason is because given enough time, <laughs> and nutrients and loving and energy it will fill in this space and if you have too many plants lined up all together if you have too much when they do start growing it's going to become overwhelming and you're going to have to start yanking some out because you won't have enough space for everything so either you'll have a bunch of stunted plants 
or you're going to have to remove some. We'll go back to the YouTube online analogy for that. If I was doing all those things, then when something really started taking off, I would have to drop other things. I said things too many times there, but you know what I'm talking about. You can apply this to family. You can apply this to obligations, just everything. Or you can apply it to nothing. I'm not telling you what to do. Oh. Trust that here in a, a month, <laughs> this will look vastly different and I will be happy that I left space for everything. Thank you for helping me plant those pumpkins. Enjoy your pumpkin bread. Catch you later.